All right, this is the last um, screencast in the series of using GarageBand. So we have our images laid down. We did our voice first. Remember, that was the rule of thumb. Do your voice first. We laid down some images that corresponded to what we were talking about. Um, we added some chapter markers on some of those. It was uh, appropriate to add links to websites. We then um, enhanced our podcast even further by adding some jingles and stingers and maybe some music loops and so on. Um, the last thing we want to check when we play back is this meter right here. Is it going too much into the red? Okay. Because you, what you want is a pretty nice spectrum of full green, a little bit into the yellow. You don't want it going to the, into the red. Um, conversely, if it's not loud enough, come to this podcast episode, especially your voice. Perhaps you didn't speak up when you were recording your voice. You may need to increase this slider to get you know, maximize your voice volume. But in doing so, you want to be careful that things like the music and the stingers don't suddenly become too loud. Um, you might better off adjust your voice using the track, the uh, track volume here instead. But so this is what this is. This is a total output of your podcast episode. Um, so you want to pay attention to but the on internet safety and what it means to be a citizen in a digital era. Largely into the most of the green, touching the yellow once in a while. That's fine. welcome. But if it's going into the red, it's certainly too loud. And if it's not even getting halfway up the green, perhaps it's a little too soft. So pay attention to that. The other thing you um, want to do is just preview everything, make sure everything's working. Um, again, your preview pane, clicking on the eye, and then on the podcast track will show you your, your images as they go by. Just double check everything's corresponding to your voice. Your uh, name is in there, your title, your description is filled in, you have episode artwork. You're ready now to get this out of GarageBand and share it. So to share, or to export, sometimes we're used to seeing. If you look at the GarageBand menu along the top, you'll see Share. And depending on your setup, you can send your podcast directly to your iTunes, or if you use iWeb to create websites and pages, you can do that. But um, you can export it to a CD, of which case all the enhancements, and the visual enhancements and hyperlinks wouldn't work. You'll only get the audio. But we're going to choose this option of exporting the podcast to disk. What that means is that we're going to save it as a file where we want it saved. And that could be on your desktop, in a documents folder, in your project folder would probably be make the most sense. Now there are a couple options here. The first one, compress using, there are two options, the AAC encoder and the MP3 encoder. Because this is an enhanced podcast and we want people to um, have the benefit of the visual, the chapter markers, um, clickable hyperlinks if there are any, we want to choose AAC encoder. Okay. The other option, MP3 encoder, all that gives you is the audio, your voice and the sound effects. Uh, the benefit is it gives you a smaller file size and in reality you might want to give your viewers two options on a page. So you might export it twice or share it twice. Once using the AAC encoder that will result in an M4A file. And then the other, you could export using the MP3 encoder that would just give you the audio file, be much smaller size. Now in terms of audio settings, you have a mono podcast, which would give you the uh, smallest size because the, the quality of the audio is reduced um, as much as the presets allow it here. A spoken podcast, which would mean the quality is such that your um, the music is it's not important that the music be of high quality. It's your voice that's most important, and that's typically uh, the the correct setting or the best setting to pick. Um, if this was really a, a musical podcast and music was the highlight of this, and you're critiquing music or and that type of thing, you could choose musical podcast. And there's even higher quality. And if, of course, if you know what you're doing beyond that, there's some custom settings. But spoken podcast for this project would be appropriate. The last setting here is set artwork to 300 by 300 pixels. That's fine if you have that checked for this project, but just so you know, sometimes if I want to display my podcast at a larger size than 300 and 300 pixels, um, and if I leave this checked, my photos are not going to, my images aren't, are not going to look so good. They'll look all pixelated. So if I know I want to display my enhanced podcast because of the nice graphics at maybe 600 by 600, I leave that unchecked and I make sure I use images that are of that size, five, six, seven hundred pixels, um, so that when I display to that size, they'll look good. 
Okay, so, but for the purposes of this project, 300 by 300 is fine. And finally, you say export. You'll have to pick where you want to export it to. And for me, I'm going to put it, yes, in my podcast folder that's on my desktop. Keep everything together. And you noticed the extension is filled in for you, the file extension of .m4a, telling you it's an enhanced podcast. It has some visual imagery to, to go along with it, including the chapter markers. And just now that you know it's in the right location, say save. And it's going to go through its routine of mixing everything together, equalizing, um, and finally exporting it to the M4A package. Um, mine's fairly short. Yours is going to take much longer than this. Um, I only have 15 seconds of audio content. Um, so, and it's done. So now I look inside my podcast folder, and I have my screencast. That's a .m4a file. Now I can share that. Of course, I can preview it. But if I open it, oh, I didn't want to open it in iTunes. Um, that's, uh, I'll have to wait on that one. Let me just bring the folder back up. Okay, but now that it's in iTunes, you notice in my menu at the top, I have chapters. Of course, I don't have much here in my demo, but I have, I can skip. Okay, and by clicking down here, if you can't see this in iTunes, there's a little window you can open up. I can click on it to enlarge it and I can actually navigate this thing by chapters. And that's where the chapter markers show up in iTunes or on the page itself. Um, the last step of this is if I was to open this in QuickTime, um, which is the plugin that it's going to use when you're viewing it on a web page, you'll see the chapter markers accessible in a, a different way. So this video would be on a web page versus in iTunes and you'll see there'll be a little chapter selection menu here. Now if I enlarge this, as I get too large, you can start to see the pixels. Because I, let, I check that box off, uh, resize images to be 300 by 300. So they look decent at that 300 by 300 size. But if I actually want my podcast to be displayed because of the images at this size, I want to leave that 300 by 300 checkbox unchecked. And of course, I would have had to use images that were larger as well than 300 by 300. So that is it. Good luck on your podcasts. Um, and um, follow these screencasts if you need any support.